Welcome to the first video of a little series that is going to be focused heavily on Unreal Engine with plugins. Now, I'm going to go ahead and give you a quick rundown on what this series is going to contain because it's going to be short, but it should be pretty content packed. Now, we're not going to be focusing too much on the plugin development side of it as that is honestly just about the same as regular development. However, I will touch on a couple of things when we get there. But the priority of this series is going to be actually creating a plugin that we can submit and get on the epic marketplace so i'm not actually going to put it on the epic marketplace but i'm going to go and show you every step from a to z on how to do so and that includes the actual setup of the plugin itself creating a basic plugin with some simple code what all you need to do to fill it out as well as the product submission process and I'm going to show you a couple oddities, such as what happens when your plugin fails, how do you read the report that they give you on how to actually fix your plugin, and all of that kind of stuff. So to begin, what exactly is a plugin? I guess is a one way to kind of sum this up. So you can kind of think of a plugin as, well, just like Unreal Engine itself. So you have the module, so think of like the engine as a module, then you have a game built on top of that module. Well, the plugin is kind of the same fashion. So you have your game, and then on top of that, you have your plugin. So a plugin is basically just, think of it like a an extension, so to speak. So you can add onto it, so you can take a little mini project of someone else's work and access it, edit it, expand it, and do what you need to with it. To begin, what we're going to do is, as you can see here, I just have a default third-person project here. You can use whatever you want. We're going to go to Settings, Plugins, and at the bottom right here, you'll see New Plugin. So we click that, and here we can see the different types. So the one that we're going to want is Blank. Now, if you look through the rest of these, they may be more suited to whatever you want to do. But again, in this case specifically, we're going to start with Blank is we're just going to have a simple actor component inside of our plugin that we can move to other projects as well. So first off, let's go ahead and just fill out the author. So in my case, just Sneaky Kitty and the description, which is going to be YouTube tutorial plugin. Now for the plugin name, I'm just going to call mine. Let's do, let's see, let me actually think of a good name really quick. Okay, so I decided for the plugin, it's going to be a actor component, and that component is going to have functionality in it to aid in, I guess, spawning a selected actor. So I'm going to call mine Spawn Assistant. I think that's spelled right. I really don't care if it is or isn't. Then once that's done, we hit Create Plugin. So let's give that a minute. Alrighty, once that's done, it'll say it was created successfully. And under here, we should have another section for the project with our plugin in it and enabled. And if we head over to our project directory, we will have a new folder called plugins. And inside of that, we should have our new plugin with all the generated content. Now what we can do is we don't have anything over here just yet. So if we go in our plugins folder, go to source, public and private. All we have is the spawnassistant.cpp and .h. So these contain your startup and shutdown modules, which you can read through the comment to kind of get an idea as to what they are used for. In our case, we're not going to be touching them, so we're not going to worry about it. Now, if you do not see this plugins folder just yet, what you can do is close down your editor and your IDE, right-click on your U project, and hit Generate Visual Studio Project Files. Then reopen your IDE, let it do its thing to refresh everything, and you should see this plugins folder. Okay, now back into the editor. As you can see here, by default, we have the content and the C++ classes for the project. Now for our plugin, all we have is content. We don't have any C++ classes. That's because we haven't made any yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create an actor component. And the way we do that is like we would create a normal class. So we go to C++ classes. Right click, new C++ class, I'm going to select actor component, and here's where we need to change whether or not it's going to be part of our project or part of our plugin. So to do that change, here we see plugin tutorial, which is my project name. We click that and go down to whatever we named our plugin. In my case, it is spawn assistant. From there, we can go ahead and name our component, 
and I usually name these corresponding to the actual plugin name itself. So for example, my FPS template and my map editor, they all kind of follow along with the same naming scheme. So here I have my FPS template. If we look at the source, so all these classes are called FPS template character, FPS template firearm, you know, FPS template barrel, so on and so on. They all kind of follow a very similar naming scheme, indicating that they are part of a specific plugin. So I would recommend you follow a, follow this in a similar fashion. So what I'm going to do is call it spawn assistant underscore character component. Hopefully this fits. I am seriously one character too short. So I'm just going to name it spawn assist underscore character component and hit create class. All right. Once that's done, it'll either say successful or failed. Either way, you can go ahead and close down that if that appeared and go back to your IDE and you should now see the actor component. So by default, I'm just going to do the basic thing. So I'm going to set tick to false and remove our tick component altogether, just like so. And then the only thing I have to do now is close down the editor and relaunch through the IDE. So it recompiles and reloads it. Once that is done, you can see now that we have our C++ classes right here. So one thing that is going to have to be noted for is the copyright. So basically, if all of your classes do not contain the copyright notice, you're basically they are going to fail your plugin just just for that like outright automatically. So one thing you have to make sure you do is fill out your copyright notice. And I'll show you how to do that really quick. So we go to settings, project settings, and here, if we just search for, well, actually scratch that, it's right here. So under all settings, if we go down to project description, you will see under legal, the copyright notice. So we have to fill this out and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste what I use in all my others. So hopefully you'll be able to read this, but as it states, it'll be copyright 2021 or the year. So here we're nearing on 2022. So once 2022 kicks off. I'm going to want to change that to 2022, then your first name, your last name, and all rights reserved. This is the format that I've been using, which is basically just a mimic of Epic. So if we go to spawnassistant.h, you can see copyright Epic Games Incorporated, all rights reserved. Well, now we will basically have the same thing for ourselves. So let's go ahead and copy this and go ahead and save all really quick and replace what we have now. So in our spawn assist character component, we can copy that and just paste it in. Same thing for our header, just like so. So your copyright notice is set at the top. Now, once, since you have already done this inside of your project settings, any new class that you create, this will get filled out automatically for you. So you don't have to worry about it. So that pretty much sums up the gist of it. Uh, let me double check my notes really quick and see if there's anything else that I want to cover in this video before we continue. Okay, so the only other thing I want to go ahead and briefly cover really quick is the actual, I guess you could say the description of it. So if we head over to plugins, go to our plugin folder and right click on our U plugin and open it with notepad, you will see here we have a bunch of information about it that we can set. So for example, under modules, what we would do is let's say our plugin required us to use Niagara. Well, you would add another section here indicating that you are using Niagara and that kind of stuff. Uh, you can go ahead and remove, if you wish, the is beta version or is experimental version. I have found if you have either of these set to true, well, at least in my case anyways, when I was in the early stages of submitting my FPS template plugin, they did not like that I had it set to is a beta version. And whenever I got rid of that, for whatever reason, that was part of the reason that they were failing it. So that's something you can kind of take into consideration. But generally, when you're putting something up in the marketplace, you will want to have thoroughly tested it to make sure that there is no glaring problems with it. So other than that, for now, we can leave all of this the same. And the only other things we will want to change in the future are going to be our support URL. So for example, that would be, in my case, a link to my Discord, which has all my support channels with it. Then later, again, before submission, we are going to have to actually create, well, figure out our marketplace URL 
and paste that in there, because again, this will be a reason for it to fail submission. Then for our documentation, so in most of my cases, it's a video, it's a playlist on YouTube. So that's what I would put the link in there. Then the created by URL. So this would again be my YouTube channel. And then we just have a version name. So by default, we usually submit at 1.0. And then after we make a couple changes and push an update, we will change this to 1.1 or 2.0, whatever this is up to you in this case. So that's generally how you would go through and make your changes before each update and before your initial submission. Well, I'm going to go ahead and stop here and leave it as is. So in the next video, we're going to just make this little plug in here, have some functionality behind it. And then we will go and work on actually setting up a very simple environment that we can build our plugin with. And I have found some great use out of this. So here I'll show you a brief rundown. So for example, I build for 4.26 and 4.27 for my FPS plugin, and I have set up batch files that aid in actually compiling and, well, let me phrase that, building the plugin folders that we need. So it generates these two right here with all of the information and data that we have. So all I have to do is zip this up, upload it, and send it for submission. So we will be building out something very similar to this to aid in the building process of our actual plugin for our submission and for our updates just to make our lives tremendously easier down the road because again if it what might you know compile just fine inside your ide for unreal engine it might fail when you are actually packaging it from your editor or it might fail for different reasons through building it you know in standalone as i do here and if you have problems in either one of those, specifically building it as a plugin, then you're, you will end up with a failed submission. So that is going to be all for now. If you like what I'm doing and you want to help support me, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description below, where I have a Team Deathmatch series just for Patreons, as well as you get early access to pretty much all of my videos, such as this one. If you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to join my Discord server that's also linked down below, and I'll try to help you out. So I'll see you in the next video.